6. We're going to read one verse this morning, Romans chapter number 6. And once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this morning, Romans chapter number 6. And verse 23, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 23, for the wages of sin is what? But the what? Gift of who? God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Very familiar verse this morning that we just read. Um, To those who've been in church for any length of time, you've probably quoted this verse, you've read this verse time and time and time again. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to listen this morning. I want you to draw a circle around yourself. I want you to forget about everything else going on. I promise you, I won't be a minute over 12 hours long preaching this morning. (laughs) Uh, But I do want to get the truth out to you this morning, and I hope that you would listen as we talk about this topic. I want to talk to you on this topic. It is a payment issue. It is a payment issue. Father... We do have a debt, but that debt has been paid. And it's a payment issue, this whole thing called salvation. Lord, I pray in these next few minutes as people listen, I pray that they would listen intently. Pray that they listen as if their whole eternity is based on this sermon. And for many, it is. Some have already settled this debt, but others are here this morning. There's no mistake they came. No mistake that you brought them here. No mistake that I'm preaching this sermon. Lord, I'm asking you to allow me to be your mouthpiece to your people. May we listen and may we respond by how you spoke to it, how you speak to us this morning, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Salvation is one of the most misconstrued doctrines in the Bible. And the reason why is because Satan is going to do anything he can in his power to twist anything about the gospel because he knows anything but God's way is a false way. Did you hear that? So if he can just twist it just a little bit, get this now, then those who trust in that twisted way will not go to heaven, but they'll go to a horrible place called hell. Understand this. Satan hates God. Did you hear me? There is a real God. There is a real Satan, and can I tell you, they're opponents against each other because God loves you, that means that Satan hates you. Somebody help me out. And because of that, we have got to understand whatever God says you do this, Satan doesn't care what you do, you just don't do it exactly like God says to do it, and Satan's okay with that. You see... Satan wants you to burn in hell because he doesn't want you to go to God's heaven. Understand that. I want to give you several statements just to start out with, and then I'll get into the sermon, and we'll explain verse 23 to you. Statement number one, there is a real heaven, and there is a real hell. I want to say that again. There is a real heaven, and there is a real hell. As much as we like to talk about heaven, I've got news for you. That place called hell comes from the same, uh, is talked about in the same Bible that that place called heaven is about. Now, we have to understand, it doesn't matter. Get this now. You say, but but I don't believe in hell. That doesn't change that it's real. Get this now. You have to understand there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. Statement number two, God does not want you to go to hell. Do you get this? God did not make hell for us. God made hell for the devil and his angels. Now get this now. That means this. Anybody that dies and goes to hell is trespassing on a place that they had no business going to because God provided a way that you didn't have to go there because God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. That means that God wants you in heaven this morning. 
He wants, he says, I, wanna, I want you to settle it today that I am going to go to that place called heaven. I am absolutely going to go there. Amen. I said statement number one, there is a real heaven and there is a real hell. I said statement number two, God does not want you to go to hell. Statement number three, it does not matter what you believe. It only matters what God says to do to go to heaven. Yes. People say, I just don't believe in heaven and hell. That doesn't change it. I don't believe in God. That doesn't change that God is real. Be like me saying, I don't believe that there's any th such thing called gravity. Yeah, come on. Because if I jump up, guess what? I am coming what? Amen. Down. Right. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I just see the results of it. I don't see God. I sometimes feel him on the inside, but most of all, I know what he's doing in my life, and I know he's, he's there. And I see the results of what God does, and understand this. You say, well, I just don't see it the way that God sees it. Get this now. He's the authority. I'm not. I have to understand his way is the right way. Amen. Which leads to the statement number four. To attempt to go to heaven by anything else other than God's plan will send you to a devil's hell. I talk to people often, every week. And I ask this question, and I ask you this question. If you died today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? The average answer that I get is, preacher, I hope I do. I think I might, but I'm not sure. When they make that statement, my response is always this. Now, there's some, that, that, there's some doubt in what you're in and whether you're going to make it there. And then I always say, what, where is the doubt coming from? This is the average answer I get, Brother Hall. The average answer is this. Well, I'm just not sure. I, I know there's some things I need to take care of to better myself so I can make sure I go to heaven. My answer to always is always this. Get this now. You've got a problem. You have a payment issue. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You have a payment issue. You see Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, our text verse we just read says, For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. There's several key words and phrases. There's the word sin. There's the word wages. There's the word death. There's the phrase gift of God. There's the phrase eternal life. And here's the other phrase through Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, let's talk about those six words and phrases this morning. First of all, let's talk about the word sin. I want you to write this beside that. Everybody is a sinner. Yes, sir. Amen. Did you get that? Everybody is a sinner. God did not, okay, now get this now. God did not say that the wages of sins, plural. He said the wages of what? Sin. Now get this now. Why did God say sin? Because one sin makes me a sinner. Right. I ask people often, are you a sinner? Now, some people struggle with that because they think, well, I'm not that bad. Get this now. It does not matter how you and I compare to each other. It's how do we compare to a righteous God who has never sinned one time, never had one impure thought. It's how we compare to God. Now, I've got to understand this morning that it is what I do with God. I'm a sinner. I do not, I do not measure up to God. Therefore, I've got to figure out the wages of sin. I am a sinner. Say that with me. I am a sinner. Say it again. I am a sinner. Get this now. Does not matter how I measure up to Brother Turk. Yeah, come on. Well, I'm better than him. Well, of course we know that. <laughs> but get this now. That still doesn't take away that I'm a sinner. Right. Doesn't matter how I measure up to Brother Tremble. We would just keep on moving. But anyway, that matter how I measure up to Brother Holt. Get this now. Do you understand? You say, I'm not as bad as the person next to me, but how are you doing with the person up in heaven named Jesus Christ? How do you compare to him? And when you compare to Jesus Christ, everybody is a sinner. Yes, yes. Get this now. God did not say that some sin is good sin and bad sin. He just said sin. He didn't say that the wages of good sin is death. He didn't say the wages of very bad sin is death. He just says the wages of what? Sin is death. Yep. Why? 
because there is no good sin, there is no bad sin. Get this now. God could have said sin, but or sins, but he said sin. Now, why did he use the word sin? This is why. Because there's one sin that'll send anybody to hell. You say, what's that sin, preacher? Have I done that? Okay, ready? The sin of not trusting Christ will send you to hell. Now, I'm a sinner. But it's when I don't trust Christ, that's what sends me to hell. It's me saying I want to trust something else other than Jesus Christ. That's what sends me to hell because Jesus said there's one thing you've got to do and that one thing is you've got to realize that the sin of not trusting Christ is what will send you to hell. Yes, we're sinners. Yes, we've done a lot of sins. Yes, those sins have a debt to be paid. But get this now, it's the sin of not trusting Christ that'll send any person to hell, whether they be a church person, whether they be a good person, whether they give money to the church, whether it doesn't matter what you've done, get this now, the wages of what? Sin is death. Yes. Amen. Hey. That's right. That's good. Everybody's a sinner. Yeah. Yes, sir. Then I want you to notice the next word, wages. Wages. God says the wages of sin. Get this now, circle the word wages and put I have a debt. I have a debt. You got that? So first of all, I am a what? Talk to me now. I am a sinner. Then because I'm a sinner, I have a what? Debt. The wages of sin. That's something I've earned. What did I earn? Because I've sinned, God says the wages of sin is death. Get this now. So there has to be a payment that I have to pay for me to get to heaven. Now, that's the question. That's what everybody's trying to figure out. Okay, what do I have to do to pay for that debt? Okay, let's look at the next word. He says the wages of sin is what? Death. Only one way for sin to be paid for. Somebody has to die. Somebody has to die. And do you understand this morning, God did not say the wages of sin, listen carefully, is going to church. He did not say the wages of sin is giving money to the church. He did not say the wages of sin is being baptized. He did not say the wages of sin is having an experience. He did not say the wages of sin is being good. He did not say the wages of sin is being good after salvation. He said the wages of sin is what? Death. God says somebody's got to die. Get this now. Somebody comes up to this baptistry back there and says, I want to get baptized so I can go to heaven. They'll still die and go to hell because it's not the wages of the baptistry. It's the wages of sin is death. Somebody has to die. Well, I'll just go to church every Sunday and I'll, I'll be faithful to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and that'll get me to heaven. No, the wages of sin is what? Death. Somebody's got to what? Die. And so I can come to church every Sunday and they'll die and go to hell because church can't take you to heaven. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the preacher. I want to confess my sins to the preacher. And maybe the preacher can absolve my sins. So Brother Hall comes to me, and he, he confesses his sins. Uh-huh. Come on, son-in-law, confess your sins. Oh, you're a Florida Gator fan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh-oh. Now, get this now. I can't absolve his sins. I'm a sinner. Right. People say, well, you're a man of the cloth. But a man of the cloth is still a sinner. Yes, sir. And you can try to trust this preacher and say, well, maybe this, maybe Pastor Domley can, can wave a wand and boom, you're saved. No, I can't wave that wand because I don't have that wand. Get this now because the wage of sin is what? The wage of sin is what? Death. Thank you. You can go back to sleep now. So, First of all, I am a what? I am a what? I have a what? And the debt is that somebody must what? Now, aren't you glad God didn't stop right there? Amen. Amen. I said, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Let's go eat some hog. (laughs) That'd be the worst thing to do. Because that leaves you hopeless. And that's where some of you are right now. You know that you're a sinner. Some of you this morning, you know you have a debt. 
Some of you know you're headed straight for hell because you're trusting something else. And you say, I don't want to go to hell. I really don't. And if I left you there, that hopelessness that you have on me, you say, preacher, where's the hope? What's the hope I can have? Well, God put a conjunction in there. Amen. And he said, but the gift of God. I want you to circle the word gift of God, the phrase gift of God. Gift of God. Circle that and put this beside it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Why are you getting it? Because God loves me. Come on now. I often ask people, I say, I say now, um, do you have to earn this gift? They say, I said, you have to work to get this. Yeah. I said, then isn't that a wage? Always ask people, I say this, I say, did mom and dad at Christmas time say you have to work to get the presents under the tree? No. Why did they give them to you? Because they what? Loved you. Yeah. Amen. Why would God, Brother Stafford, why would God give me a gift of going to heaven? Ready? Because he loves me. Amen. I love Romans 5, 8 that says, but God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet what? Sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. I'm glad it didn't say in that while we were pretty good or in that while we're in church or in that while we got baptized or in that while we're giving money to church. He says in that while we were yet sinners. Can I help you out? In that while you're drinking your beer, in that while you're taking your drugs, in that while you're committing adultery, in that while you're cursing, in that while you're living an abominable life, in that while you're living in this worst of sin, we say, hey, God still loved me, even spite. I've done all that. God still loves me. Boy, I think of that. I think of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Get this now. God didn't say I loved you on the good side of you. He says I didn't just love you on the bad side of you. I loved you on the whole of you. He says I chose you just like you are. Hey, God loves you this morning. Can I say to those who come this morning, you lived, you slept on the streets last night, God loves you. Amen. Did you hear me? God loves you. Can I say to those who live in a shelter somewhere and you say, my family doesn't want me, nobody else wants me, I've got news for you, somebody loves you. Who is that? Oh, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Hey, thank God he loves us. He said, oh, preacher, but I'm a felon. I've got a bad past. Oh, you look at my past. I'm ashamed of my past. And nobody wants to be around me. Oh, there's somebody that wants you. His name is God. His name is Jesus Christ. He loves you this morning. Even though you may have broken man's laws and spent some time in prison and man may tag you as a felon, there's a God in heaven that says, I can take that felony off your record in heaven. I can put paid right there in heaven. If you just trust Jesus Christ, he says, hey, I love you the way you are. Amen. 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 That's, good. That's right. That's good. Wow. He loves you. Yeah. Religious proselyte. Yeah. Well, You've gone to church your whole life. You think you're pretty good. You think you're so good that you're going to go to heaven because you're good. And that's just as bad as having a felony on your record. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Amen. This is good preaching right now. Because sometimes we can think I'm pretty good. God, God wouldn't send me to hell. There's a lot of what the world would call good people burning in hell right now. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. There are people who are bad people on this earth that got saved somewhere and they're walking streets of gold. You say that's not fair. That's not the point. The point is they got the debt paid. And when Jesus looked at the debt, he said it's paid, paid in full. How? By Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, praise God. Amen. Amen. For the wages of sin, I am a what? I am a what? Say it with me. I am a sinner. Say it with, say it with me. I am a sinner. For the wages, say I have a debt. I have a debt. Then he says the wages of sin is death. Say somebody must what? Die. But thank God, but the gift of God. Yeah. Say it with me. God loves me. Say that. God loves me. Amen. 
He said, Preacher, would God's love reach down to where I'm at and love me? Can I tell you, there is no depth that you can go that the love of God can't reach you all the way down in the miry clay and lift you up out of that miry clay and set you on the rock of Jesus Christ Amen. and establish your goings. Years ago, I was preaching in a girls' boarding school. I made the statement to what I just made to you right now. After the service, a young teenage girl comes walking up to me, tears rolling down her face, and she said, Preacher, she goes, I don't think anybody could, I don't think God could ever save me. I don't think God loves me. Tears rolling down her face. And I said, young lady, I said, I said, why do you say that? She goes, oh, she goes, I, I'm, I'm a gang member. And she goes, what I had to do to get in that gang, she says, I had to give my body to all these young men. She says, I feel so filthy and I feel so dirty on the inside. She says, I don't think any, I don't think God would ever love me. I look back at that young lady and I said, young lady, it doesn't matter what filthy men have done to you. There's a God in heaven. He can reach down to where you are. He can save your soul. He can watch your, wash your slate clean. Can I tell you? Yes, God loves me. That's good. Amen. God. I think it was here in Oklahoma City years ago when I was preaching at a revival meeting here. It was with Brother O'Daniel. We were going soul winning. And I came to this guy. He's sitting in his front yacht lawn and his shirt was off. He had tattoos all over his chest. And, and I began to talk to the man and I said, Sir, I said, can I ask you a question today? He said, if you die today, are you sure you go to heaven? He looked at me, he looked back at me, and he said, I'm sure of one thing. I said, what's that? He said, I'm sure I'll go straight to hell. Wow. And I said, sir, why do you say that? He says, because God could never save me. Wow. I said, why would you say that? He says, sir, he says, just about a year ago, I got out of prison for murdering my wife and her lover that I found in bed. He said, I spent a couple decades in prison because I murdered two people in passion. And he said, I don't think God could ever save a murderer. I looked back at the man. I said, sir, if I could show you that God could save you, would you get saved? He says, if you can show me from the Bible that God could save me, yes, I would get saved. He says, I don't want to go to hell. I just don't think I could be saved from there. I said, sir, I went through the plan of salvation like what I'm talking to you this morning. I said, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. I said, sir, are you a whosoever? I said, what does whosoever mean? He says, anybody. Doesn't that include murderers? He goes, it does. God says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, sir, I said, don't you understand that God can save the murderer just like he can the one who's never murdered somebody? It's not the matter of the sin you committed. It's the God in heaven that paid that debt for you. That man that afternoon bowed his head and prayed and received Jesus Christ as a Savior. And when God looked at that man's record, though man may keep records of a man's felony account, God looked at that man's record that said, just as righteous as Jesus Christ, he's on his way to heaven. Why? Because he got the debt paid. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. There's another phrase. He says eternal life. Oh, I love that phrase. You say, why eternal life? What's so big about that? It means once you get it, you never lose it. He didn't say conditional life. He said what? Eternal life. Amen. Brother Turk, you're a smart man. When does eternal end? Never end. Never, huh? Brother Means, you sit by a mean woman right next to you. She's your wife. Her last name is Means. When does eternal ever end? Huh. Hmm. Let me come down to one of these young men up here. These are smart young men right here. Right here. You the smartest one of the whole bunch? No? Oh, right there. They're pointing to you. Okay, let me ask you something, Jesse. Jesse, are you ready? When does eternal ever end? Never. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hey, that means once I get my debt 
paid. Hey, it's paid forever. Amen. 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 That's right. Hey. Amen. Well, don't I have to be good to keep it? If you had to be good to keep it, then it's not eternal life. Right. It then becomes conditional life. Look at me. Do we understand this morning that God says the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. He says to death, hey, young, hey, young people, hey, right here, look up here. This is church time. Amen. I'm talking about eternity. I want people to go to heaven. I don't want them to go to hell, and I want you to go to heaven too. Amen. Now listen. Do you understand this morning? Do you understand this morning? God loves you. God wants you in heaven. God doesn't want you to go to hell. Oh, he paid the debt for you. And he says, if you just take it, he says, I will give you eternal life. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Oh, I got saved June 21st, 1973. And from that day until now, I am still saved. And from this point till the day I die, I'll still be saved. When these eyes close in death, this soul inside of this body is going to go straight to heaven. Why? He gave me eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Now follow me. But then he says, but the gift of God yeah. is eternal life. Brother Hall, would you go sit down there? Boys, this is church time. You respect God. The gift of God is eternal life. What? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. That's where we get it mixed up. He didn't say through getting baptized. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Didn't say through going to church. Through Jesus Christ. Didn't say through being good. Through Jesus Christ. Didn't say through education. Through Jesus Christ. He simply said, hey, it's only through Jesus Christ that you can be saved. Say, preacher, why are you so adamant about this? Because I know there's a real heaven. I know there's a real hell. Let me ask you a question. If a house was burning this morning, if your house was on fire and I saw it, and I just stood there and watched it burn, what would you think of me? Why, you're on the inside, sound asleep. You think, wow, you don't love me. Why would I get on people this morning a little bit tough? Because there's a real heaven. There's a real hell. I don't want anybody to go there. And I understand that one person being disturbed could keep one another person to get, from getting saved and hearing the truth. And somebody has got to say, there is real heaven, there is real hell. Hey, danger ahead, danger ahead. Trust Jesus, trust Jesus, trust Jesus. Years ago, I was out riding motorcycles in Pinnacles, California. I was out there riding. My friend was in front of me. We are going pretty fast on this trail. There's supposed to be signs to let you know if there's danger ahead. Somebody must have either taken the sign down or it had been removed somehow. We're going real fast, and all of a sudden, my, hand, my, my friend right in front of me threw up his hand like this, which means to stop. He threw it up, grabbed his handlebar, locked up his wheels, and turned sideways to stop. His hand going up warned me, ground, put the brakes on, do a little side turn, and stop that bike. We came right up on a cliff. Almost went off that cliff. Somebody took the sign down. Someone almost went over that cliff. Two, two someones almost went over that cliff. I'm glad that my friend was there to throw up his hand and say, whoa, hey, cliff, I couldn't see it. He could. I said, okay, I locked it up. Could you imagine me just driving on by? <laughs> I'll show him. Let me tell you what's going to happen this morning. There's two, two, two people in here this morning. 
There's one that's listening to me this morning. You know you're not saved and you need to get saved. And you'll be like me in that motorcycle. You'll lock it up and stop and say, I need to trust Christ. And there's some that are going to walk out of these doors. Keep on going. <laughs> that preacher. Loud. Hard. And they'll go through life and die and go to hell. When they had the opportunity on the 23rd of October to trust Christ. I come this morning to let you know I have a debt. I am a sinner. I have a debt. And so do you. And what happens is God says, the only way, only way it can be paid, someone's got to die. But somebody did die. You trust his payment. Get his payment applied to your account. And God the Father will look at your account and say, paid, debt, forgiven. Forgiven. How? Do I get that gift? That's what I told that murderer on his front lawn. I said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God brought you here, ladies and gentlemen, for a reason. He knew what I was going to preach this morning. He knew you were going to hear the clearest presentation of salvation you've probably ever heard in your entire life. If you walk out of here today, it's not my fault and it's not anybody else's fault here. It's your fault. All you've got to do is trust Christ. Can I tell you how I trusted Christ? My mom showed me what I showed you today. We lived in Conway, South Carolina at the time. There that night, when my mom showed me the, the, the plan of salvation. I knelt down beside my couch. And I said to Christ in prayer, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know because I've sinned, I deserve hell. I don't want to go there. So right now, I accept your payment on the cross and the blood that you shed to be the payment for my sins. Come into my heart and save me and take me to heaven when I die. That night when I said that to Christ, he saved my soul. My debt was paid. I never again have to wonder about my debt. Paid in full. This morning, in just a minute, I want to give you a chance to do the same thing I did that night. I want to give you a chance right there in your seat to trust the same Jesus that I trusted many years ago. If you'll trust him like I did, he'll save you. Like he did me. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I wonder who in here this morning would say, Preacher, I needed that reminder this morning. I know I'm saved, but that was a great reminder of what Christ did for me on Calvary. I enjoyed that reminder this morning. Boy, thank you, Preacher, for reminding me of what Christ did for me when I got saved. If you like that, we just slip your hand up high. Oh, I see hands all over there. Now, let me ask you another question. I want you to listen very carefully. I wonder who in here today could say, Preacher, listen carefully to this next question. No one talking. Preacher, if I died right now, I know 100% sure I'm going to go to heaven because I got my debt paid. I trusted Christ as my Savior. I can remember that time that I got saved. Preacher, by raising my hand, I can testify I got saved. I have asked Christ to save me. Would you slip your hand up high to testify of that? Wonderful, wonderful. Many hands are raised. You can put them down. Now, if you didn't raise your hand, that either means one or two things. Either you didn't understand the question or you're just not saved. I wonder who in here this morning would say, Preacher, right now, if I died right now, I'm not 100% sure I'd go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Pray for me. Would you slip your hand way up high? I just want to pray for you. God bless you and you and you and you and you. And you right there. Someone else, I see that hand back there and this one over here. Someone else, I see that hand right there. Someone else, that hand right there. Someone else, I, 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 I want to get it settled today. I need what you talked about. I need to get saved. Anyone else? I'm not raising my hand yet. I see that hand right there. God bless you. And this hand over here, God bless you. Anyone else? I needed that this morning, preacher. Pray for me. I, I, I need to get that thing settled. I need to get my debt paid. Anybody else? Anybody else? I see that hand right there. And that one right there. And that one way back there. And this one over here, 
right there in your seat. I want you to listen very carefully. You've just heard the clear presentation of salvation. Right there in your seat, you can ask Jesus. You can accept his payment, that gift, for your sins. You can get your debt paid right there in your seat. You say, preacher, I want to do that. I right now want to trust Christ, and right now, right there in your seat, would you say this to Christ? Mean it in your heart, and he will save you. Say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. I do want to go to heaven. So right now, I accept your payment on the cross as the only payment for my sins. Come into my heart and save me and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. If you're like that right now, if you said, preacher, I just prayed that prayer right now. I just asked Christ to save me right now. Would you just leave your hand way up high? I just prayed that. I see that hand and that one and that one and this one.